to today's episode of the Flying Frog podcast. I am delighted to be joined today by Lorraine Day and my co-host Graham Hoskins. Um, today we're going to be looking specifically at some of the complexities that we've been experiencing around hybrid working. So today Lorraine, who many of you probably know actually that are watching this, she is the um, she was the COO of Teleperformance UK and South Africa. And more recently, she's actually been supporting Teleperformance USA with some of their challenges they've had over hybrid working. Because lo and behold, wherever you are in the globe, the issues are the same, okay? So over the next 20 minutes or so, we're gonna be finding out some of the insights. We're gonna be looking at her experience, some tools and techniques that she's deployed and some learnings from her role there. And that big question, you know, if, if you could bottle high would you do differently? We'll come on to that in the end, okay? So, so let's kick off. Lorraine, in your world of, what is it, multi-clients, multi-locations, multi-culture, multi-people, um, what is it? What, what's been your experience around that multiple world? Yeah, hello, hello. Um, and, and a privilege to, to, to join you um, all today. Um, Great to have you. Yeah, uh, delighted to and, and excited to really share and talk very positively about the past 18 months or so and the experiences that we've all been through, um, particularly in um, a BPO world. Yeah. yeah. Um, so just just to remind everybody that teleperformance um, is a global outsourcing um, uh, business. And we employ 380,000 people. Oh, I think we lost you a bit there on the sound. My sound went a bit there. Does yours, Graham? It did, yeah. I think you said 380,000 people, didn't you, Lorraine? Yes, I did. Yep, yep absolutely. Yep. So, um, yeah, worldwide. Um, and so let's just break it down. Let's just focus and share my real-life experiences of yeah. the UK yeah, yeah, absolutely. UK, South Africa. So that equates to um, 12,500 people across um, our offering, um, serving about 65 different clients, yeah, um, in both the public sector as well as our core commercial business as well. Um, so a real mix. And I'm going to now proudly tell you all <laughs> that in probably around the end of March and the first four weeks of 2020 April, yep. we worked at sending people working at home. Yeah. And I just checked this morning and the percentage is still 90% of our UK South African workforce are successfully working at home. Well, wow, big achievement, especially in an outsource world, which is different, and across yes. 65 different types of clients. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, uh, and, and I thought that we were planning um, to probably around September, October time of this year to start slowly controlling bringing people back into the workforce, working with our clients, yeah, um, and hot off the press uh, just this morning, um, we have brought very small clients back in. I'm talking about 60 odd different people, yeah, um, versus the large volume. Um, so the slowly controlling coming back into the office. Yeah. And how do you see that shifting? Do you, do you see many people coming back if you've got 90% at the moment working away? Where do you see that kind of tipping point to be that you'll stop? Yeah, and I think that that'll probably go on to where is our future thinking, right, about the hybrid model, um, for sure. Um, I have a vision and I've talked about that vision for 18 months. I see it being a 50-50 split. Now, whether whether you can quote me on saying, hey, it could be 47, Lorraine, or it could be, you know, 67, then... Um, uh, who knows, but I see it as a 50-50 split in the future, offering a service for our people. Yeah, because the most important thing um, in all of this is our people. And if um, people watching will be really interested to say, well, why have you gone for 
50-50, not 70-30 or 80-20, whatever it means. What, what kind of makes you rest at 50-50? Yeah, um, I think it's because I have a, a gut feel and I've asked how our people feel and what their appetite will be for mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Now that we have broken the back of yeah. working at home, because it was very fearful back in mm. 1990, uh, 20, 20, uh, 2019, yeah? yeah. Uh, couldn't even remember which year it was in then. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so it, people were very fearful of it, both clients and people. Yeah. But now people's mindsets are, I'm really comfortable and I'm getting back quality time and I don't have to commute. I don't have to spend mm -hmm. on the coffee bar coming into the office. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have to spend on my lunch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have to spend on a break. Um, yep. So people are more, much more comfortable with doing the working at home now. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Uh, yeah. And go, going back to April 2020, Oh, you mentioned a moment ago, sixty-five clients. What was the reaction of your of your clients? But you're in a you know, you're in a particular uh, position compared yep. to somebody who runs their own contact center who is just their contact center. You're basically running contact sixty-five contact centers, aren't you, for your clients? So, what was their reaction to we're going to get everybody working from home? Yeah, a really mixed view, Graham, and the country at the time. If you bring your all your minds back there you know there was a panic yeah our mm. government was telling us to stay at home mm. yeah? <laughs> we have a serious challenge here stay at home don't go out yeah um and we also needed to be able to still run our business and serve our clients and uh, be able to keep those people in work yeah more importantly yeah. Mm. um so a real mixed view um our focus at the time was to support our people, first of all, with a calm leadership approach. Yeah. And I want to get that really strongly across because our people needed support. Mm -hmm. the, the country went into a, a panic at the yep. time. Yep. yep. Um, many people were just firefighting and yep. Going, yep. Absolutely. And so we needed to have a, a very calm leadership and the same approach was used with our clients. We did have some clients that were insisting that we come into the office yep, to deliver the service um, and then you'll get paid TP. Right. Um, so we would have some very controlled um, professional conversations about the situation that we faced in country. Yeah. Um, and how we were going to be managing that to protect our people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and support our country. We were also doing um, a government piece of work to support the NHS as well so we kind of had that on our side and would share that with many of our clients mm -hmm. yeah. um, so we were in a ramp through recruitment at the time um, and we were trying to keep calm yeah everybody and protect their roles yeah. um, so it was a very controlled conversation with many a client and it was a lot of duplication if I'm honest over a good couple of weeks mm -hmm. um, until some clients actually said hey how can we help you do this um, and I even had some clients giving me laptops for our staff to be able to send them home. Yeah, That's really um, cool because they were a little scarce at the time yeah <laughs> So did they did they all come around in the end? All the clients? They did mm. after a period of time. Um, there was some um, some that that really needed some uh, real um, confidence building. Yeah, um, but yeah, probably after about three to four weeks, during the time where we were sending people home, literally picking up computers off desks and saying, "Go home with your computer, and we'll set you up. Call us on this number, and we'll set you up, um, and you'll be able to do this at home." Yeah. And when you when you think back to that to that period of time, mm -hmm. so uh, at the start when you were going kind of, when it was all new to everybody, are there any things that you think back on that you think, yeah, we did that really well, or conversely, we could with hindsight, we could have done that better? Yeah. Um, so I, I'm really proud of 
uh, our, my team at the time and how we supported all of our people and the pace and the speed that we delivered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what we could have done better was controlled, um, actually the wrong word really, but supported our clients in our communications better. Mm. Yeah. Um, that would be the learn. Um, and, and still today, um, I mentioned uh, before, in fact, um, days ago on another conversation I, I was having, what was the performance dip that you experienced, right, uh, over, that, over that time? Um, and I've got to say, key KPIs were not affected against most of our delivery. Yeah. Um, however, one of the things that, that I did delve into, which was system downtime. So when you've got somebody working at home and their system decides to give up <laughs> for whatever reason, yeah, uh, normally you would, in an office environment, you would be able to have somebody come over to you to fix it, yep. yeah? yeah? The virtualization of that process, yeah, could and still today still could be better. Mm. Right. So that would, I would only say that that was my, one of my tips is about, our IT teams, yeah, supporting our operational delivery. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the same time, sometimes we were a 24, seven days a week operation, yeah. whereas sometimes the IT guys weren't there and they needed to be. Yeah. That, that's so that was, for many organizations, doesn't it? Where kind of the rest of the organization has to kind of in many ways move forward to support the whole customer entity. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm particularly, Lorraine, on employee engagement. Oh, um, yes. You know, yeah. talk, tell us a little bit about that, because I think you yeah. do some amazing things at TP. Absolutely. Um, and and that's, again, another um, exciting moment that, that I feel is we were we had a strategy to turn the engagement around <clears throat> within our own teams anyway before COVID. Um, with doing it virtually, we needed to work extra hard at doing that yeah so over communicating and offering support yeah still today we have multiple activities throughout a working week where people can dial in um, to various different sessions and that ranges from yoga to, me to mental health support to uh, listening to music yeah? yeah just to calm your busy working day or shift yeah. Um, and those sessions are still going on today. They were hyped right at the beginning and we kind of switched the button on yeah, mm -hmm. for all of those activities, as well as we would run um, daily leadership sessions with our people um, that were then translated to all of our workforce yeah. and then weekly um, and then monthly town halls. Yep. So come and talk to us. Tell us how you're feeling. Yep. yep. And we'll see what we can do to help and support you. Yeah. And, and and just to give you an idea on some of the things that were coming out, you know, I I was working. Um, I, I'm I'm delighted. Thank you, TP, for keeping my job. Where some of the things that our people were saying, but you know what? I'm still at the kitchen table and I'm struggling sitting on the stool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I get a chair? Uh, please yeah um and we would uh be absolutely getting that person the right chair to be able to conduct their duties as if they were in the office yeah I, I, it's really interesting now because the whole self health and safety issue is starting to bubble away as people are coming out of firefighting and realizing that actually this is going to be a key part of how we work in the future but I, yeah. I guess we're going to pick that up at another separate time, maybe in a different podcast even. Yeah, I, yeah. When we were discussing this, you, the, the whole video issue is really oh, big for organisations, isn't it? You, you're in a meeting and people haven't got video switched on. And as a leader, that can be really frustrating not getting the feedback. What, 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 what was your experience around video with all the yeah. town halls and everything you had going on? So... Um, our communication channel was Teams, yep, yeah? so Microsoft Teams. Um, but lo and behold, only our leadership team had it. Mm. Yeah? 
<laughs> so, so there I was on a um, an exec call saying, I need all of our people to be able to access Microsoft Teams because it's our communication channel in this now virtual world. Yeah. So we need to find a way of doing this so that our team leaders can communicate directly with their teams, either on a one on one or within a team group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and what we found was when we were running town halls, people that were asking questions would put their video on. Yeah. Because bearing in mind, these were hundreds of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they would then take their video off. So some really very comfortable with this. Yeah. Um, so we went down the road of a big investment, not only in PCs um, and uh, uh, tech kit, but then also Teams access. Yeah. Right. For all yeah. of our people. And we then extended that to offering um, a webcam for our people. Yep, but totally their choice as to whether they switch it on or switch it off. On a one-on-one -on -one with your line manager, we would encourage that. Yeah. Yep. Um, but if uncomfortable in a group environment, it's okay. So it was really yep. up to the individual and how they felt. You kind of were, seems to be very relaxed about it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, and it, we went out with that communication um, to people as well. So, yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, as you, you were just talking there about providing um, webcams, and you said right at the very start that uh, some, of, some of your team members would be literally picking up their PCs and taking them home with them. So, as you now progress back to staff coming into the office, and move yep. towards your 50-50. If you've got uh, a staff member who um, wants to be able to work from home 50% of the time and 50% in the office, so they're genuinely, genuinely a hybrid rather than just purely working from home or in the office, presumably that has cost implications then for you've got to have double the amount of kit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so again, uh, commercially for, a, for a, a classic BPO, yeah, we would need to do the numbers on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think that my, my key messages here is let's ask the people, yeah, what they want, because you often find that they will say, I'm 100% comfortable to work at home. And if they can, fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you get another group of a set of people that will say, I 100 percent want to work in the office, please. Yeah. And we had those people throughout the whole of COVID that mm. came into the office every day. Yeah. And going forward, would, would you employ people that couldn't get into the office? So you, maybe your main hub was, a, I don't know, 100 miles away. Would you now look to employ people that were much further? And so genuinely working at home only rather than the hybrid coming in and some time at home? Yes, yeah. Um, so we have had, um, so our government program that we worked on is totally work at home. Right. Yeah. Um, so they could be all over. They could be in the depths of Scotland to the down south, wherever, where we don't have any locations that they could go to. Some of our other programs um, are completely dedicated and will want to have them all come back into the office at some point in the future yeah so our stance will be um, we would employ people from a recruitment perspective in a 15 mile radius oh okay yeah, so that they can at some point come into the office. But that's only my 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 key message here is that's only on some programs. So again, it's about working with your client yeah. to say what it what is your what is your offering. And teleperformance also offer um an automation tool called Cloud Campus, um, where they um you can have none of your people come into the office. They can do it at home and save all of these costs. Mm -hmm. We're offering that to our clients. So right. they're signing that up and they're committing to saying, we don't want any of those people coming into the office. Therefore, that's a benefit to us on our cost of buildings. Yeah. The challenge there is maintaining the quality, isn't it? And so that this lack of performance dipping, which is outstanding, 
continues yes. and or improves. That's yes, that's absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So we're definitely looking at the volume of what we would describe as bricks and mortar. Yeah, yep. um, office space to our offering. And that's why I've talked about it's potentially going to look and feel like a 50-50 split. Right. OK, so that it, really your 50-50 split is very much client led and client dependent. And yes. in, in negotiating that right model for the client, as well as what's right for your people. Just, just out of interest, because we've been talking about models recently. Do you see a world where you might actually use local satellite offices and have more of this hub and spoke model where for a particular client, you know, you'll have a much more flexible office arrangement rather than them coming into a main traditional hub? Yeah. Um, now, so yes, in, in short, Natalie, absolutely. Um, but we've created those hubs in some of our own bricks and mortar operations right. okay. from a cost perspective, right? Yeah. Um, longer, longer term. Who knows? Yeah. It's yeah. interesting. That's, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. That, no, it's just a, who, who knows? That's the big debate, isn't it? <laughs> That's, yeah. you know, mm. it, it might be that that suits now. We're working towards a 50 50 split in the next 12 months, potentially. Mm. And the next 24 months, what will that look and feel like? Interesting. It, We've identified that there are 12 different models around hybrid working and different shapes and sizes depending on. And it sounds like with, you know, 65 plus clients, you're probably operating all 12 together. It would be an amazing case study just to, mm. just to actually yes. pick and say, which model are you working? And, you know, even yeah. the pros and cons of each, mm. the learning must be phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So okay. apart from hybrid working, what else do you see as the future, Lorraine? Um. This, it has to be, and I, don't, I, I want some key messages to come across here. It has to be on the people. Right. Yeah. What do they want? Because one of the biggest challenges that we globally are facing right now is recruiting. Right. Yeah. So I've experienced it incredibly highly in the US right. um, and, and also in the UK. Yeah. Not seeing it so much in South Africa interestingly um but definitely in the us people are saying i don't want to work yeah. and i also don't want to work unless it's officially working at home mm. yeah the same and level of pay <laughs> oh no 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 so and demanding a very different um pay rate right yeah which is which is challenging for us yeah. as a bpo offering and extending that to the client. So yeah. you're saying pay rates are going up, whilst in effect the employee costs have gone down. So the yeah. difference for the employee is much greater than just what the organisation is seeing. Interesting. Yeah, absolutely. That, that puts um, a big pressure on a high margin or a low margin business, doesn't it? Correct. Absolutely, it does. Yeah, big time. So I think we have to be focusing on what is the what are the people wanting. Yeah. So how are we attracting and who are we attracting? Yeah. And then we need to make sure that we keep those people. Yeah. Give them career opportunities and flexibility and uh, variety. Yeah. yeah? Yep. Um, wherever possible. Also working incredibly closely with our clients and the future of our clients proposition as well in a more virtual world. Yeah. Um, Everybody is very keen to continue to grow. Yeah, of course they are. Um, we've all heard the new, you know, the budget today. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and the challenges that that will bring for set, particularly the UK. Um, but we need to be working very closely with our clients to be able to offer the right standard at yeah. the right price. Yeah, um, and then in all of that, um, BPOs need to be considering. Um, what else can we do, yeah, that's stepping outside the box because our world has changed. Yeah, absolutely. And we need to be thinking outside the box to offer that solution for our people and our clients. Yeah, digital transformation as well amongst all of that takes it to a new level for BPO, doesn't it? It really yes, it does. changes it for the in-house organisation but means your, your model has to be so much more value-driven. 
correct than transactional or just you know contact management absolutely yeah, yeah. um and it, and we're already talking to many different clients about offering different services from a back office perspective mm -hmm. for them as well which is yeah. opening that that up um I, I, I was going to try and reflect back on some of the kind of key key things i've heard over the last 20 minutes or so and actually, as you were talking about the future, you've summarised most of those anyway. <laughs> so you've done, you've done a very good job of doing that. Yes. No, absolutely. No, it's, no, it's been great. I mean, the, fo yeah, the focus on the people, but also, you know, and that rolls into who and how you attract them. Um, and, and if there's a kind of a few words that, that popped out for me, flexibility. So both in terms of working with your clients and with your, your, your team members, but about bringing those two together. In a, in a flexible way but i guess as well having an open mind which you, i guess you need to have the, you know the, ask you asking the clients and your team members to be open-minded as well about that flexibility yeah um, and i can i sorry graham i just want i remember having a conversation and raising it with at our town halls i was really comfortable for people to again fit their working day yeah around their home life so mm -hmm. if it suited them to say hey lorraine i can give you three and a half hours in the morning and four hours in the evening yep our wfm team need to make that happen mm -hmm. <laughs> yes <Yeah>, somehow <laughs> yeah um because that is making us a, a fabulous flexible offering for our person yeah, yeah. it's fitting their lifestyle yeah um and, and their new world um and we're going to keep them yeah, yeah based absolutely on that. yeah uh, and I, I think i think that kind of flexibility is is part of the way forward that everyone's going to have to embrace if they want to keep or retain or attract you know yes. the yeah keep and retain the same isn't it yeah retain or attract the best people yeah. and being yeah. able to be that flexible um, and that's great because it gives you flexibility for your clients as well. And that was the other takeaway for me was just yeah, the focus you've had on your people um, and being able to, to uh, on their, you know, their, their happiness in their place of work. And that's, you know, that's a perfect example you just gave there. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, and that's probably why we, you know, we have also got great place to work, best place. Mm. To work yeah we've in fact i think there's just it's all over linkedin just now that we've become the 25th european um organization um uh, as well so um i'm proud to be able mm. to say we've done that but it doesn't stop there you have to absolutely continue it you're not going to match everybody yeah, yeah. but if you talk about the challenges you experience let's see what we can do together but what one of the things you've got in play there Lorraine is an engagement team responsible for oh, yes. engaging and the, the, the role's in the job title isn't it yes you know? and, and that's a, a great thing to have and you know I think other organizations can take lead from that you putting that all together and in place yeah and we had them um and we have them uh, attached to each of the clusters yeah um so we had a north and a south of for the uk northern ireland um, and scotland and we would have engagement coordinators across that piece yeah. that would work with the leaders work with the accms yeah the ccms on yeah run by the operation rather than running yes. run by hr business partners or wherever else it might be in the organization yeah, and I and, and I've got to say, um, I fought quite hard for that. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, because uh, yeah, there there is a, a difference and a mismatch. And again, you can our people can see HR with the rules, mm -hmm. and I didn't want engagement to be a rule. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I think the engagement team is, is a great place, um, to, uh, a very positive place for us to finish up. Um, the Flying Frog podcast with Lorraine Day. Lorraine, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Natalie, thank you to you as well, of course. Um, I would just like to mention we've got uh, the hybrid working big debate. So this is 8.30 on the 23rd of November. And if you're interested to come and hear some senior leaders from within uh, our industry talking about the big issues about hybrid working, you can register at hybridworksmart.com. 
Please also remember to uh, like, share, and subscribe. And if you've got any thoughts or questions or anything that you'd like us to talk about, again, please get in touch with us through the website um, or through LinkedIn, or you can contact me or Natalie at, so for me, it's Graham at hybridworksmart.com or Natalie at hybridworksmart.com. That's it for now, and uh, we will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.